Hey y'all, from a design standpoint, today we're gonna take a square peg and we're gonna put it into a round hole. So stick around. Hey everybody and welcome, my name's Roy and today we are going to take an image that will not fit into a tumbler and make it fit. And I'll tell you how this all began. I had one of the uh, Facebook group members in my group ask a question. They shared this photo um, or this piece of art saying, how can I make this fit? Well, I didn't read the entire post. And so my assumption was, how do I make this fit onto a tumbler? So I thought, you know what, that's a great idea because it was kind of a generic image, but it was very horizontal. And there's no way that image by itself would be able to fit on a tumbler. So today we're going to take that image and we're going to make it fit. Now I don't own the rights to this image. I don't know where it came from. So I'm certainly not going to actually make a tumbler out of it. Uh, and I'm not going to um, sell it or anything like that. But I thought it was interesting because somebody was asking and I thought, well, hey, I can fix that problem and, and, um, and be able to show you all as well. I'll give you an example of where it could come into play in a wonderful way. You do not want to uh, steal other people's work. You don't want to steal images or designs, but you might have something of yours or a family members that you want to put on a tumbler. I'll give you a great example. This is a photo that my father painted. Now he passed away when I was six, so I never really knew him well. This was at our lake house in White Lake, North Carolina, and it's the only painting he ever did. And so I am very proud to own this. I have two older sisters though that probably would like to own it as well. So what I did was made this into a tumbler. Now, as we all know, this portrait shape won't fit. So um, I did some Photoshop work and made it fit. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, well, I'll show you right here. That's what the final image looked like. And what I did was I took this and I doubled it and then adjusted it so it didn't look doubled and ended up making it uh, so it would fit. The image we've got today is very, very horizontal. And so, um, you know what, let's go to the computer and let's take a look. The black border is my template. So I want my design to fit in that um, space. So here's our image. We're gonna select all and we're gonna copy it, then go back over uh, to my master and uh, paste it. So that's what it looks like. Now, one of the challenges that um, the original person that posted this image had been concerned about is when they went to print it out, it was printing small. And the reason it was printing small, they were using a JPEG and I was explaining to them that that white is part of the image as far as the printer uh, and printing software is concerned. And this example is I'm changing that white to red. If I went to print that out, then that red is going to print as well. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that white. Now, there are a couple of ways to do that here in Photoshop, probably more than two, but the way I'm gonna do it, the more difficult way is to select the rectangular marquee tool and then highlight the, um, the, this image, since this image is a very rectangular image, and then I'm going to inverse and hit delete and it'll take care of that white. The other way to do it is to take the magic wand tool, select anywhere in the white and hit delete, it'll do it as well. Okay, so here's the image that we are going to work with and we have to make that fit um, uh, in this blank space. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is enlarge this image so that it will fit uh, as best as I can get it to fit within the size of the tumbler template. In this case, the left and right sides will go up against the template and we'll have a lot of dead space at the top and bottom. Now, a lot of people try to stretch them out. I don't do that. I think that in almost every image, it looks horrible. Um, this is an example. You stretch that out. The text looks bad. The Jeep looks bad. The frogs look bad. So it's not something I do. Every so often with maybe a, 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 a pattern, it's okay to stretch it just a little bit, but I try to not do that at all. 
Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to break this image down. Now, there's the Frogger text, the Jeep, and the two frogs. So what we want to do is we want to pull all those images separately from um, this uh, whole image. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the black text. And the way to do that is to select my magic wand tool. I'll click the black and then select similar and I'll copy that and then I'm going to paste it. So this new uh, layer 379 is nothing but black. But if you'll notice, there's a little bit of an edge on that text. And so I want to select that as well. So I'll select that. I'll hit similar and um, I will copy that and then I'll paste it. So on that uh, layer 380, I now have that uh, shade and it also is uh, part of the shading on the Jeep, which we can uh, deal with later. So now I'm going to take both of these layers and just merge them together. And uh, what I want to do then is select the, um, uh, uh, the lasso tool and um, highlight that text. And then I'm going to cut it and then paste it back. So now... That new layer 380 is nothing but the Frogger text. So I want to go back so I don't get too confused later on and make sure I um, label that Frogger word. So that's what that layer is. Now what we're going to do is go back to our layer 379, which was all of the black and shading, and I want to pull the Jeep out. So I'm going to select all of the Jeep. So in this case, instead of cutting and pasting, I'm going to select um, inverse and we'll just delete um, all of that extra because we don't need it. So I will rename that layer Jeep and now we have the Frogger text and the Jeep. The only thing left on this other than the background is the the two frogs and it looks to me like the frogs, frogs are just flipped. So I'm just going to pull one frog out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to use the lasso tool and select around that frog. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space so I can play around with it. I'm going to feather it and put that on, let's say, a four. And then I'm going to, um, I actually have to select that layer. I'm going to copy it and then I will uh, paste it. And so... That is our frog. I probably didn't need to use the feather because I'm, I'm probably going to um, erase that part out. But we now have the text, the Jeep, and the frog separate. So what we've got to work with now is the background. And there are several ways uh, to get the background fixed. And in this case, I'll use at least a couple of ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone stamp. The clone stamp will be uh, very important in this process. So there are, there's green and there's yellow shading in this background. So I want to take that green and yellow shading and basically cover up everything. So the background is nothing but the, um, nothing but the green and yellow. And what I'll do is I will select different areas uh, to clone and I will use the yellow and green in a way that I can maintain the flow of this design. Now, here's another way, and I'll be using this a bit too, is I'm going to copy a good section of that, and I'll feather it a little bit, um, and then we're going to copy, and I'll paste it, and then I can take that and I can move it up and turn it a little bit counterclockwise. So you can see that that, that yellow line, that tie-dye line, is following the same pattern. And once I get it to where I think it's going to look pretty good, I'm less concerned about covering, it, uh, covering up the frog because I'll get there. I'm just trying to get that, that yellow tie-dye to look like it's going in the same circular motion. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to take the eraser uh, and I'm going to use um, 
a brush that's got a fading effect on it and I'm just going to um, some of those harder edges I'm going to erase out just like that so it really will look like the um, that layer 379 uh, will look like it's part of 378 and and I'm going to um, I'm actually gonna uh, make a copy of their our original layer just in case I mess up and then I'm going to take the copy and that little section that I had pulled out um, and merge them into one layer and then that way I can go in and I can go back to the clone stamp and work with that and again this is all about getting that yellow pattern to flow in the same direction and here with the Frogger I'm using the um, the clone stamp to get that um, that, that piece of frog on the top taken care of. Now we still have a good section above and below this design to take care of, but we'll get to that in a minute. First thing I'm trying to do is get this taken care of so I can then use this to clone, stamp, or copy and paste up at the top and the bottom. So now I want to pick another larger section that I've already fixed. We are going to highlight that area. Um, I'll feather it so it's not as hard of an edge and then we'll copy it and paste that. Then I can take that area and I can pull it up and turn it a little bit. Actually, I think I'll, let's do this. I can take that area and pull it down and turn it clockwise a little bit so we can start covering up this Jeep. So once we get it uh, kind of where we want it, remember the, the, the big thing with this particular background is that yellow swirl and making sure that it is, uh, it looks like it's just a continuation of the swirl. And that's why I have to turn that little copied piece uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And of course, I'm going to use the eraser tool again to soften up those edges a little bit. And then I will merge uh, that piece with the, the background we're working on. Then I can go back to the clone stamp tool and start working on uh, trying to get a little bit more of that uh, Jeep taken care of. I might be able to do this, the rest of the Jeep, just with the clone stamp tool. Let's see what we can do. I've got enough green in there. And because my brush is soft, it's helping with that, um, that the, where the yellow and the green merge. My brush is soft enough that it's going along with that. Anyway, yeah, I think I can do all of this with the clone stamp tool without having to uh, copy and paste another section, although I'll be doing that again in a moment. And I just want to kind of clean this up and give it a look like it's a, a swirl. And, you know, another little challenge with this is you can see that the, uh, the you, not only do you have the swirl, but you have the, um, uh, the little stripes of yellow the, the, that are flowing um, center to outward, and they have to kind of be maintained too. I'm rambling. I hope I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Anyway, we're going to be able to take care of all of this with the uh, clone stamp tool, and then I can just sort of make up what I want this inside to look like because, you know, okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, what do you think? Is that good? Maybe a little bit more green there. Pull some green from over there and bring it in. And maybe do a little yellow there. What do you think? Make that yellow. I guess that looks okay. Like it's like it's circling, spiraling into the center. Yeah. Okay. Um now we have to worry about this uh, bottom area. I'm trying to get as much of the clone stamp done so then when I uh, copy, I can copy a, a little bit bigger section. 
And so, how does that look? That looks, that looks pretty good, what we've done so far. Now, I need to work on getting rid of that frog. So, I probably can use the clone stamp to get rid of most of this. It's really all about finding the particular shade of green or shade of yellow um, or where the two blend and make sure I'm using uh, you know, that same shading. So it's a lot of little, it's not like I clone one area and then uh, drag it all around. I, I've got to go back and pick up um, uh, little areas and then put them down. Yeah, we're going to be able to get rid of this little froggy here by just using the clone stamp tool. You know, some, um, some images or are, are some designs, some backgrounds are easier than others to, to do this with. Actually, when I first saw it, I thought it's probably going to be a little bit difficult just because of the shading, because you really got to get that swirl right. Then you got to get the, the little, um, the way it's blending, you know, the way it's going from in to out. And then also you've got to really create an, another whole section um, in order to uh, make it fit within the, the tumbler space. So I'm going to use this uh, clone stamp to get a little section down here done as well. It looks like we've got everything done except the text that says Frogger. So that'll be um, what we're shooting for here in a second. Um, let me try to use this clone stamp to get a little bit more um, done. And uh, now we're going to, um, well, hang on a second, let me, let me make this look a little prettier, a little more spatial. Okay, looks good. Mm. I'm not sure I like that darker green. I guess it's okay. Yeah, let's get rid of that darker green a little bit. Uh, and sometimes I'll be zoomed in real far, uh, real real tight, and I'll, I'll think it's looking good, and then I'll back out and go, well, no, that just doesn't look very good. So now I'm going to cut out a bunch of that, copy it. Uh, we'll feather it first, um, and then I'll copy it and paste it down. And then we're going to kind of shift it up and see if we can start working on the upper half and the um, frogger. So really this entire process is a lot about copying and pasting and cloning and fading and merging. And I am just continuing to do that. Um, when I copy a space, I have to use a soft edge on the eraser and really erase those edges uh, a lot so it looks like it blends. I'm not worried about uh, as much about the, the, um, the text in the background because I can cover that up with a clone stamp when I merge them. And let's merge them. And then we can go in and start, um, I use the clone stamp to uh, uh, make that uh, fit a little bit better. So, we are going to do a combination of clone stamping and copying and pasting and merging. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch another 20 minutes of me saying pretty much the same thing. Basically, that is what we're going to be doing, though. The goal here is to keep the theme of the background, which is that swirl, that yellow swirl. So we want to cover up the text that's on there and then after we do that we will extend out the the top and bottom and make sure the whole thing is covered and we can also grab small and different sections to copy and paste in this case i'm using that inner circle the bottom part that was finished copy that and then put it on the top merge it together and then use the clone stamp uh, to uh, to try to make it all look uh, like it was meant to be. 
So, and then as we do it, we're continuing to clean up um, a little bit as well, zooming in and then zooming out. Take this other section here, copy it, and that really gives a good look of that, that circle. Um, and then I'll use another section and bring it over uh, and fade out the edges. And then the, the top left corner, really I wasn't sure what it would be, so we just added a little bit of yellow there to give it a different little bit of a background. So the top's pretty much done. And then what I'm gonna do is cheat a little bit and copy that top part and um, flip it. And then I can use some of that for the bottom. And I still wanna take a, a big section and, and copy it and flip it. and Really it's just a lot of it's a little bit boring after a while. Um, I enjoy doing it because it's a little bit of a challenge. But that's pretty much the background completed. And I think it came out pretty good. So now we need to put the other parts and pieces back. So we need to get that text. And we need to get the Jeep. And the frog and bring them all back and really as we um, as we make them visible again they're pretty close to being um, being pretty darn okay I have to fix that frog for sure and we're gonna position these in a way that will look good for this design I don't think I'm gonna put a, a second frog on I think I'm just gonna leave it like that so Again, I'm not doing this for anyone, so I can kind of uh, do what I want here. Uh, but I'm going to arrange this in a way that I think may look a little bit better. So I need to go and get rid of the green around the frog. And I'm starting with the magic wand and selecting that the green that's on the just on the frog layer. And um, feather it, delete it a little bit. And then I'm also going to use the erase uh, tool to... Uh, let me make that smaller to go in and um, and pull that out. The reason I don't have the other layer hidden is because I want to see what it will look like uh, when it's against that layer. So I'm using the uh, magic wand again to try to pull some out, make sure it works okay. It is. And then I'll go and use it again. And then I want to erase, use the eraser and go in and and get uh, some of those areas that are see-through. And I'm just trying to get really close. Let me use the magic wand again. So it's really just a combination of the magic wand tool and the eraser to achieve the results that I want, which is to get rid of the uh, most of the green that's around that frog. And so let's see, you can see a little bit around the hand. That's okay. It's going to blend in um, just fine when we um, make that main background layer visible again. It's those harder edges and large sections of green that were, um, were not working quite so well. Sometimes they work. That's why I started with it. And then I can play around and pull some of it out. Um, that looks a, a lot better. I can still clean it up a little bit more. Let's try the magic wand tool right there at his bottom. See if that helps a little bit. Yep, look, pulls that out. I'll do the same thing a little bit lower. Feather that. That way I might not have to use the eraser as much. Oh, looking pretty good. Deselect that. See what we got here. That's not too shabby. I think that's uh, going to be okay with the frog. Um, the frogger text looks fine. We'll size that up where we think it'll look good. And then we've got the Jeep. Let's make that thing a little bit larger. 
And, you know, there's something about that Jeep I'm not sure about. But I do need to make this image fit on a tumbler. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the black border and then select my background, hit delete and deselect. And then that is exactly the size that I need for my tumbler. The Jeep's bothering me. So that Jeep is a little bit blurry. I want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'll select, um, I'll, I'll click on that layer, and then I am going to use the magic wand tool, and I'll select the black, and then I'm going to select similar, and I'll copy that, and then, let's see, after I copy it, I'm going to paste it. So now I should have a new layer that is nothing but black, and maybe that will fix it. But it doesn't. It's very choppy now. So, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to, yeah, that's not looking, that's not looking good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, hide those layers. I'm going to go back to, remember that original, the layer that we made a copy of in case we needed it? I'm going to go back to that, and I'm going to um, use the magic wand. I'm going to select black and similar, but then I'm going to do a new layer, and then with the new layer and the black selected, I'm going to use the paint bucket tool and click on there. And then that new layer will make everything that was selected black. So that's what we have. And that's much crisper and cleaner than what I tried before. So it also, when I did the black, it selected other black. So what I want to do is go in here and, and highlight the text and then we'll hit inverse and delete, so that deletes everything else. So we just have the Jeep, and it's a very clean version of the Jeep. So what I want to do is go back and um, size it up with the one that we had. I can delete that old Jeep layer. Here's the other Jeep layer. Let me take my new Jeep layer and size it, get it a little bit close in size to the other one that we had, because I kind of like that size. That looks good right about there. And, yep, so we can delete that uh, that layer. That's our final Jeep layer. And then we can uh, turn on the frog and the frogger. And, you know what, I, I think we have a, a file. You know, I do need to do one more thing. If you look at the far left and the far right side of that image, the coloring is not exact. So when you wrap that thing around, you're going to see a seam. Um, and it will be, uh, it won't be bad, but it'll be noticeable. So I am going to create an edge for, um, for this file and I'll select a green and, um, and then use the rectangle tool, um, and make a, um, a little box, simplify that box. And then I can go over to styles um, hit a stroke and then click on the effects button and um, and play around with it. Uh, sometimes I'll use the the black line. Sometimes I don't. I think eh, maybe I won't in this case. I use drop shadow a lot and I use the stroke function a lot. So you can see how that drop shadow uh, creates a little bit of a, a shadow there, which is nice. And um, up the opacity just a little bit see what that looks like and that looks pretty good let's let's use some bevel let's up the bevel a little bit um, it looks pretty pretty good and so I just need to go back in and click on my master template and um, uh, first, I need to take that layer that I just, I need to take that edge and I need to simplify it uh, so that I can um, use the magic wand tool to select the black border and then select my shape and hit delete and then it matches perfectly. And that's our design. And here it is on a, on a mock-up.
So if I made it, this is sort of what it would look like. So that is one way to use Photoshop, in this case, Photoshop Elements, to take an image that obviously wouldn't normally fit within the confines of a Tumblr design and make it fit. And there are a thousand different ways to do it. It really depends a lot on what the design is that you're working with and what you can do with that. I do encourage if you have any um, artwork from family or drawings or anything, it's always so wonderful to put it on a Tumblr either for them in their memory. Um, I, I, have, I, my, I have a brother-in-law that is an unbelievable artist, one of the most creative people I've ever met. And he had a, 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 did a portrait uh, of himself and I put it on a Tumblr for him and he really liked it. So um, I do encourage that. But I do have to give you the backstory of this. The girl in the Facebook group was not asking how to fit it onto a Tumblr. They were asking how to fit it onto a license plate. It was almost perfectly sized for a license plate. They just had that white border that the, the computer didn't know what the color was, so it was trying to print it out. So in the end, all she was asking was how, why it was printing smaller, which was because of the white border that just needed to be taken out. But because I didn't read, we got to do this video today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Speaking of the Facebook group, please come over, join. There's some really great, great folks in that group. We're having a lot of fun. I do ask, though, for you to answer the questions and agree to the group rules before you join. I cannot approve anybody that hasn't done that. I'm just trying to keep spam from coming in. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Feel free to go back and look at some of the other videos. We've got some great ones on different sublimation techniques and doing different things with tumblers. And, uh, and you know the drill. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll get a little ring whenever a new video comes out. Um, and please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you follow along. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <sighs> Keep from strictly speaking and doing different things with sub and doing different things with and doing different things with tumblers we'd love to have you follow along we'd love to have you follow along hey everybody and welcome my name is roy and today <laughs> i'm going to scratch myself <laughs> don't forget to click that notification don't forget to click that notification don't forget stop it